Hi, and welcome to Creative Life TV. I'm your host, Linda Peterson. Thank you for joining me inside my studio today. This is where I love to be on a day like today. It is cold and icky and rainy outside, but inside I've got lots of glitter and all kinds of fun stuff to work with. I don't know, days like today just really get me in the creative mood. So today I'm going to be using the theme of snowflakes for our show, and I've got three projects that I can't wait to share with you. First up, I'm gonna show you how to create a polymer clay snowman. Now this is a project that has been popular with my viewers for a long time. I wanna share it with you again, but I also wanna share you the little story that's behind it because I think when you add a story to your characters, it just seems to bring them to life. Then I'm going to show you how to make a really quick and easy gift with a candle votive and some glass etching. We're going to make a, a snowflake motif on a little uh, candle votive. And then I'm going to show you how to dress up your windows with glitter and glue. So we've got a lot to do and we'll get started just as soon as I come back. I'm really excited to share with you this first project, this little snowman, because this is really one of my very first loves, polymer clay. It's how I got started in the business. I started 20 years ago when my kids were little, Mariah and Alex were little, we went to craft shows and I made little characters. And I think what really draws me to them is the personality that you can infuse in each one. It's like I made up a little story and they came to life as I was creating them. And once you do that, it's just kind of addicting. You just want to make more and more and more. So I'm going to share with you one of my favorite things to make, and that's a snowman. So little Sparkles the Snowman. He is a really easy project. And this, if, if you're wanting to learn how to do polymer clay and you don't know if you can or not, this would be a really good project to get started with. So here's how. Snowmen are so easy and so much fun to make, and that's why I like to start off a beginner's doing snowmen or even bears. So if you are new to polymer clay, this is a great project for you. And if you're not so new, this is hopefully an inspiring project for you. So I've already conditioned white polymer clay. You'll need some white, about a block, and then I have a tiny, tiny piece right here of orange. We'll use that for his nose. And then all these little specks over here, these are eyes. And of course, we're not going to put all those eyes in the snowman, but what I've done is I've made tiny little balls from black clay and I've pre-baked them for my eyes. So maybe you'll wanna do that too. So let's begin and um, let's start off with one of the legs. Now, I start everything from a ball and I use the six simple shape method. This ball is about the size of a marble. And what I'm going to do is we're going to create one of the arms. And to do that, we're gonna roll this into a tapered log, so watch. If I just roll and I press down on one side of that ball, look what happens. I get a tapered log. So it's going to be thicker at one end and thinner at the other. I'm gonna finish this up in my hand. And this would make your arm. This is about an inch, an inch and a quarter long. So we'll set that to the side, and I've done the same thing here, just a bigger version for a foot. And the only difference with a foot, I'm going to press my thumb into the bottom to create more of a foot shape, like that, at the bottom, okay? Now, it's, sometimes it's hard to work with polymer clay because um, even if you think your hands were clean, like mine, sometimes we get little things in the clay, and you can kind of wipe those away with a little baby wipe. That's a tip for you right there. So you're gonna make all of your body parts first. That's what I do. I make all the parts that I need first. And here is um, the body. And the body is exactly, made exactly the same way as a leg. It's just a bigger version of it. And I made this from a, a ball that started out to be about an inch and a half big. So it's just a big, huge leg. It's thicker on this end, and I've really pulled up the neckline here to elongate the neck. Now it's just a matter of putting on his arms and legs. So I'm going to turn this towards me. I'm just gonna press one of his legs there. Let's put the other one over here. And we're gonna name this Snowman Sparkles. And I'll tell you the story here 
as we go along. I met Sparkles at Silver Dollar City. I was making um, a snowman there. I had a little booth during one of their craft festivals. Here, we're going to put on the arm. And a pretty grumpy old man came up, and he was not having a good day. And he was kind of making his wife miserable. But I got to talking to him, and I started talking and asking him questions. Well, he didn't really want to talk. Like I said, he was grumpy. But finally, at the end of my demonstration making this snowman, I got him to laugh. And I told him that he could name the snowman, and he named it Sparkles. And this has been one of my favorite snowmen ever since. So now we have the arms and the legs. All you can see is I pushed the legs in at the bottom, and then I've put an arm on each side of the neckline. And now we're going to set him aside, this headless little snowman. We're going to work on the face. Well, as the story goes, the man left, and I really never thought I would see him again, except the next morning when I opened up shop. Here he came, running down the hill, and apparently he thought about his time with me yesterday, or the day before, and he couldn't get that snowman off his mind, so he had to buy him, and he bought him for his wife. And his wife told me that after the whole sparkle saga Story, that he was in a much better mood and they had a quite a pleasant day. So that's the story of Sparkles. And that's what we're recreating here. It's always been a favorite story. Now what I've done here, and you saw me just a little bit ago round out the hole for the neckline, but what I've done is I've just made a ball. It's about an inch big and I've shaped it kind of like a between a rounded triangle and a cube. So it's not a perfect cube, it's not a perfect triangle, but it is a little bit thicker at the bottom end here than it is at the top. And then took a knitting needle, and hollowed out a hole for the neck. That's really important, because that way he'll sit right down on over the neck. Now we're going to make his face, and I'm going to zoom the camera in a little bit more here. This is always my favorite part of making any little character. I'm going to take a little piece of orange clay. It's a real tiny little piece. It's almost not even measurable. It's just a little speck. I'm going to shape that into a cone, just like that. Can you see that? And we're going to take that cone and set that right on to his face. I like to put my nose on first. That way I know exactly where I'm going to put my eyes. And I'm going to create two holes right here. A hole, kind of like a little indentation there. A little indentation there. And I'm going to drop those eyes in. You can see I'm kind of rounding out those holes. I'm going to drop a little, whoops. Drop a little bead in there. Try to pick up two beads that are fairly the same size. It always helps. Push that down a little bit more. Now I'm going to take my fingers on the shape the eyes. So I'm kind of going to like a little signature teardrop look that I like for my snowman faces. And we got to give him a little smile here because Sparkles is a Cheerful snowman. So I'm going to mark the beginning and the end of my smile. Right like that there. And then I'm going to come and I'm pretty much going to draw a straight line with my needle tool. You can also do this with a toothpick. Kind of a straight line. And, just, and then I'm going to press in with my thumbs and bring it down so that he has a nice little Quirky smile. Round out his chin. There's his face. Okay. Now we gotta add him to his body. And of course you can add any other little details that you want. If you need to, you might have to hollow this end out a little bit. We're gonna stick him right over the top. It's giving some buttons down the front of him. Okay, Sparkles, I think you're ready to go into the oven. What do you say? So Sparkles is ready to go into the oven, and when we come out, 
or when he comes out, not when we come out, when he comes out, I'm going to wrap a cute little ribbon around his neck and he'll be all finished. He is just so cute. He makes me smile. And he's so simple. Think of all the different ways that you can vary the look of this snowman. Maybe you make another snowman and um, maybe he's standing up. Or maybe you put a little hat, a little stocking hat on him. You could do that if you just cut the fingertips off of an old pair of gloves. That would be a really cute little stocking uh, cap. Or maybe you just simply change the uh, color of his scarf. There's so many ways that you can alter this snowman and make your own snowman collection. And remember, kind of think of a little story too as you're creating him. It really gives him a personality and brings him to life. Well, now we're going to change gears just a little bit and we're going to grab our tacky glue and our glitter and we're going to decorate our windows with some snowflake window clings using Aileen's tacky glue. So to begin with, you want to grab your bottle of the Aileen's Tacky Glue. You'll also need a dimensional paint to outline the snowflakes, and you need some form of color. So I'm going to be using a, a mica powder. You can also use acrylic paint. That works really well, too. Now, I have printed out a template of snowflakes from my photo editing program, and you can also hand draw this, or you can do a search on the Internet and come up with some copyright-free images. That works really well. And I'm going to lay a page protector over the top. So we're going to work directly on this page protector because that's how we're going to peel them off when we get completely finished. Now you will outline your snowflake with the dimensional paint and you're going to let that dry. I already have that finished right here. You can see I've already outlined my images. And the reason we outline is because this gives it a nice outline, uh, outline so that when, you're, when you put the glue in, it doesn't ooze all over the place. And if you happen to mess up a little bit, I'll show you how to fix that a little later. So now you're going to come in with your uh, tacky glue. And you're going to fill in side your snowflake. It's pretty forgiving. The tacky glue kind of spreads out and it will level your, itself. And you can see that I've already started on one of my other little branches here. Give that a nice generous coat of glue like that. And then come in with your mica powder or your pigment or your paint just add a little bit of powder. The cool thing about this is is that the tacky glue is going to dry completely clear but wherever you have paint or powder it is opaque so it gives it a nice swirly effect. You can also add a little bit of glitter if you want a little bit of sparkle. You'll know when it is ready to go when it is slightly uh, transparent and it should be fairly easy to peel off of your sheet protector just like that. You're also going to notice that these are really nice and flexible. If you happen to make a little boo-boo, maybe your line isn't as straight as you want, just come in with a little pair of scissors and clean those up. Moisten the back with a baby wipe and now it's ready to stick to your window. Those snowflake window clings are a great project for your kids to get your kids involved in crafting. Maybe it's a snow day and you're wondering what you're going to do to keep their busy little minds active. Well, grab your bottle of tacky glue and a little bit of glitter and let them have fun creating designs of their own. Now, we're going to move on to the next project and we're going to actually use the same pattern that we used to create the window clings, the little snowflake pattern, and this time we're going to etch on glass. We're going to create these really cute snowflake glass etch votives. This is a great little accent for your table or it would make a really great gift. So first you're going to need to cut off a little piece of contact paper. Uh, it doesn't really matter the size, you just want to make sure that it's going to cover your um, jar or the area of your snowflake. Now you can use any glass uh, that surface that you want to. This could, would work on a glass tile, it would work on a mason jar, any kind of bottle. 
Here I'm using a glass votive, and I've already covered it with uh, some of the contact paper. So you can see that right here. It's hard to see because it's clear, but this is going to serve as the resist for your etching material. Now here I have printed out a little snowflake pattern, and I got this off of my Photoshop. Um, you can draw a pattern yourself, or you can also download one from the internet. And I've applied double stick tape to the back of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this down onto the front of our glass votive, right over the top of the contact paper. So just kind of center that and position that. Make sure that that's good and anchored down. And then come in with a craft knife and you're going to cut out all the way around your snowflake. Just take your time, be precise. Now you're cutting through a couple different layers, so it's going to take some pressure there. But just take your time, be real careful because obviously the blade is very sharp, so you don't want to cut yourself. Okay. I'm going to go all the way around this snowflake. Now once you've gone all the way around your snowflake, cutting it out with your craft knife, you're going to use your craft knife to lift up and remove the snowflake. And some of those areas may tear a little bit. That's okay. But what you want to make sure is what you're leaving behind is actually the glass surface. Make sure that you cut between all, or cut through all of the layers of paper and tape. And then of course the uh, contact paper, you want to make sure that you're cutting through it as well. And really it's those corners. Make sure you get those corners nice and cut there so that your edges will lift up real easy. So now what you're gonna do, just like I'm doing here, is you're going to remove the snowflake from the pattern. Now that I have the snowflake completely removed, we're ready to etch and put on the etching cream. Now it's always a good idea to just kind of double check and make sure that you've removed all of uh, the areas that you want to etch. Make sure it's all the way down to the glass. And then come in with your, with your etching cream, and I'm just going to use a makeup sponge here. Make sure you don't get this on your skin because it's very caustic. It'll burn your skin. You can even use some rubber gloves if you need to. And you can see I'm just daubing this on really generous. Make sure that you get all those areas of the snowflake covered with the etching cream. And make sure that you don't go over and get etching cream on any of the other surfaces that you haven't protected with the uh, contact paper. So we're going to let this sit for about five minutes. And I'm going to wash this completely with water. And we'll come back and finish. So I've removed all of the contact paper and all of the excess um, paper that was left behind. And you can kind of see right in through here. You can see a little bit of that etched area. It's not going to show up real well while it's wet, so don't worry about it. If it doesn't show up right away, as it dries, it shows up. And we're going to make this show up even more right now. So what I'm going to do whoops, is I'm going to come in with an alcohol marker. And I'm just going to color over this etched area. This is really cool. This kind of makes it a little distressed. But because we have um, an area on the glass that's been etched, it's actually going to grab this ink. And we can come over then with a baby wipe and we can reveal our snowflake here. Let that dry for a little bit. Now the more you rub over your snowflake, the more distressed the pattern is. Now you can see that it shows up. And we're going to go in and add the final details. If you like a little bit of bling, of course, you could stop here if you don't like it uh, quite so blingy. But I love bling, and I think when I think of snowflakes, I think of lots of glisten and sparkle. So I'm going to come in with some stickles, and I'm just going to draw in some little snowflake marks like this.
Now the only thing left to do is add a couple little rhinestones and you're finished. I think one of the reasons why I love snowflakes so much is that they remind me of nature's glitter, the way that it sparkles and it shines and it glistens. It's just something about that that mesmerizes me. And of course, I love all things blingy. Now you can make these in other colors. You can totally, there's lots of variations you could do with these. You can alter the color of the marker and uh, create a totally different color palette. You could use a different color of stickles or glitter glue. You could even put colored rhinestones on here to make it uniquely you. And I think this would be a great gift. In fact, I love getting handmade gifts. When someone has put their heart and their soul into something that they've made especially for me, to me that is just priceless. Well, that's going to wrap up our show with our projects. I hope you've enjoyed our snowflake-inspired projects, and I hope that you'll go out and grab some polymer clay and make a whole collection of snowmen for yourself. I hope you'll get your kids crafting with the Aileen's Tacky Glue and a little bit of glitter so that they can dress up their own windows. And I hope you make lots of gifts for your friends, too. These little candle votives are perfect for that. And you can get all of our project instructions on the web at coolacraft.com and lindapetersondesigns.com. You can also interact with us on Facebook and like our page at Cool the Craft and Linda Peterson Live. We would love to hear from you and we love suggestions for future episodes. But for now, that's going to do it for today and I'll be back again with more projects to help you keep living the creative life. I'll see you again real soon.